My name is Thomas Paromka. I'm going to talk to you about a very drastic uh, phenomenon. That is to say that parental alienation can be, and often is, induced by state organisms into the children. I am from Trennungsväter e.V., which is a German NGO with a special consultative status with ECOSOC. This is the Economic and Social, Social Council of the United Nations. And uh, we are closely monitoring what's happening, especially in Germany. There is a purpose in inducing this parental alienation in children sometimes. Uh, similar practices may exist in other countries, but uh, I'm going to give you the example of Germany. And please note, I will not read all my slides to you. You, you can read by yourselves. I'm giving you uh, some additional information. And if you are interested, you can take a copy of our slides. Just give me your business card and uh, I'll send you a, a file by, uh, via email. So now, basically there are three chapters to my talk, sorry. Firstly, I want you to know how it is done. How can a state agency induce parental alienation into a child? Well, there are two basic types, you can see that, but we have noticed that in the two types, the events and the order of, uh, of uh, events is the same. So we, we will talk about one case only, and you can see where the differences apply. In Germany, we've got an institution that is called Jugendamt. We will never translate this because it is not a child welfare office. It translates by child office, and that's what it is. They are dealing with children, not mainly for their own welfare. Uh, and I have to say, not every Jugendamt is doing wrong. Please forget that. Many Jugendamt agents try to do a good job and to help the children, but our criticism arises from the fact that there is no effective control of the Jugendamt. Once something has gone wrong, it will stay wrong. There is no uh, remedy. And please note as well that in this talk, I will not say at every sentence, um, it's my opinion, I do think. This is understood. It's very important that you know that, because uh, somebody might accuse me of giving false information. So this is my personal opinion and my personal perception. In Germany, whenever you have got an affair in a family court, uh, involving children, of course, the Jugendamt must be heard. You see it on this uh, side here, on, on the right. Jugendamt is sitting there and is heard. Nobody knows what that means. It has to be heard. But the fact of being heard confers to the Jugendamt all the procedural rights of a party. So it is sitting down there along with the parents. And the Jugendamt may, for instance, file claims. Although it, it has nothing to do with the cases between the parents, it may, uh, it may file claims, but when you come down to some uh, duties of the parties, then the Jugendamt is exempted of it. For instance, the parties have uh, the, the obligation to talk the truth to the court. The Jugendamt does not. They may lie. We have letters from federal ministries to this effect. The Jugendamt is not concerned by the obligation to tell the truth to the court. But the Jugendamt is as well heard like an expert. The courts rely on the Jugendamt expertise. They have too, less, uh, too, too short time to investigate a case, so they call the Jugendamt's agents and say, please tell me what you have seen and I will base my decision on that. But you can refute an expert when you notice that he is biased, that he is on, clearly on one side. A Jugendamt agent can never be thrown out of a procedure. Thirdly, the Jugendamt has some of the rights of a judge. That is clearly not possible because uh, it's a violation of the principle of separation of powers. The Jugend is part of executive power and it acts like a member of the jurisdiction. But that's the way it works in Germany. And this is why once a Jugendamt has taken a child out of a family, which normally would need the authorization of a judge, but they can do it, this child will never return into its family. And lastly, 
although the Jungdom is sitting with the parties and has all the rights of the parties to be heard, sometimes the judges may decide against the Jugendamt, but the Jugendamt is not bound by the court decisions. It may do whatever it wants. It can supersede the judge's decision. This has been declared okay by our constitutional court. So the Jugendamt, in fact, is a kind of super judge sitting above the jurisdiction. So, as you have seen, the Jugendamt is everywhere. On all sides of the table, you got the Jugendamt agent, with the parties, with the experts, and above the judges. A situation which is dramatic, because there is no remedy against any Jugendamt in, in, in Germany. Well, then, when you have a, a, a procedure in family court, of course, there are some allegations. Jungdom will say these parents are dangerous for their child or so. When you want to see your own file at the Jugendamt, you are denied the access. So you don't, you have no knowledge of what you are being charged with. This is very important because any mean of defense necessitates the, the, necessitates the, the, the knowledge of the facts. The law clearly says that you have a right of access, but uh, I can show you hundreds of court decisions where they decide the exact opposite of the law. Where the Jugendamt has been accused of uh, arbitrary abduction of children, and the court said in order to instruct this, we want to see the, the Jugendamt files, and even the courts are denied the access to, to the Jugendamt files. So, as we can say it very shortly, the Jugendamt is not subject to any effective control. All the control mechanisms that exist in the law or on paper do not work. So now we come over to the judges, because all the system would not work if the judges didn't participate in it. We have observed, and there's a big discussion in German, in, in German uh, papers, Judges increasingly do not respect the national law. This is even known to, to university professors. I have heard myself a professor in a conference at Dusseldorf who said a man who teaches and uh, examines future judges, and he said, please forget the idea that in family court the law is being observed. He said it very clearly. So, uh, well... <laughs> The consequence is that in Germany, less than 39% of the populations have any trust in the judiciary. It's even worse than that, because a judge may call an expert in order to, to learn about the facts of a certain case, or, for instance, allegations of sexual abuse. But if the expert's report is not to his liking, he may override it. Judges interpret the law randomly. I've heard a judge who said, well, this is what is in the law, but this is what the law really means. And it was the exact opposite of the text in the law. Uh, in everyday practice, you, you can challenge a, a judge on ground of bias, but it doesn't work. It has been, I don't know how many how many years it has been since the last judge has been thrown out of a family procedure. They always will say, no, uh, I'm quite okay, I'm impartial. And that is all they have to do, they stay on the procedure. Yes. Um, I'm giving you now a very, very important, it's the key slide, I, I shall say. We have developed a method and we have discovered, we have discussed it with uh, scientists. This is the way the parental alienation is practiced by the Jung and by the judiciary. We have four phases. Each phase starts with a word, uh, with a syllable end in German. This is why we call it the method of the four ends. First of all, the Jung or a parent takes a child out of its family. Secondly, there is a phase of delay which is used for alienating the child from both parents or from the alienated parent. Thirdly, the child will at last be heard in court, but of course it will declare, ah, I never want to see my dad or my mom again. 
And this is where the judge takes parental custody away from the alienated parent or from both parents if the case is young dumped against both. And lastly, there's expropriation. Because when a child has been taken out of, of its family, it goes to a foster family or to a home, and then the parents will have to pay for that child. And this amounts up to 6,000 euros a month. I don't know many people who earn as much as that. Well, uh, due to time constraints, I'm stopping here. Let me just say that according to the definition of the United Nations, all that is happening here is clearly defined as torture, according to Article 1 of the Anti-Torture uh, uh, tre uh, Treaty. And we are working on that with the United Nations right now. So thank you for your attention.